on today's episode. The inspiration for this project came from the Hackaday website. Uh, often go there for sources of inspiration and, uh, and new things. As always, links in the description if, uh, if you're unaware of this site. So, along with many, I had a fascination with thermal cameras, but the, um, the price has just been uh, putting it out of, out of reach until now. So, uh, there's a, a brief description of the, of the camera here, and it's using this uh, AMG 8833 thermal sensor array. What we need to do is to head over to GitHub, and then we can find how to download the uh, the code and again there's the similar description of uh, of the camera and uh, connection diagrams and such like having downloaded the uh, necessary code we can see the code here unzipped into its directory underneath my Arduino uh, documents uh, libraries let's open it up I've already checked in the device manager uh, which COM port it is, it's COM port 8 which I've set here and not forgetting obviously to set the correct board for the M5 stack so let us first um, and unfortunately we have an error I should mention also that uh, if you haven't already obviously you need the M5 stack uh, libraries, SPI wire, and importantly, download the uh, Adafruit libraries for the thermal sensor. However, this error is due to something else. Let's take a look. The error message appears to be because it cannot find um, these uh, definitions. The reason for that turns out to be if we take a look at the high-level directory, the interpolation file is not in the same directory as the sketch. If we now move that into the same location, let's see if we have better luck. We'll just verify the sketch once more. Okay, so it compiles correctly now without any error. So we can go ahead and upload it to the, the M5 stack. And we encounter a communications problem. Um, often the reason for that is just that the device needs to be replugged. So let's try that. Again, third time pays for all, as they say. And now the sketch is running and we can see the information on the screen. Uh, obviously I don't have the, uh, the actual sensor attached yet, so that'll be the next thing to do. Now I have the thermal sensor connected up to the M5 stack and uh, Unusually for me, uh, I'm probably renowned for very complex uh, projects and things which are quite uh, daunting perhaps, but anybody can make this. It's just the four wires, the 3.3 uh, volts VCC, ground, SCL and SDA, uh, which go to their respective pins on the, on the M5. It's uh, refreshingly simple. Let's turn it on. Now we can see the uh, the heat from my laptop, for example. This is the type of thing that uh, I've really got involved with this thermal camera for. And um, just looking at the at the laptop here, you can see on the right hand side it's relatively cool. And as we move to where the processor is, uh, we can see obviously that it's uh, it's heating up um, on the there's a like a crosshair in the, in the center so we can see the temperature at that point and it records the maximum we can also change the minimum and the maximum values i think from 0 to 80 as we move across the laptop 
we get to where the heat pipe is uh, that channels the hot air out to uh, to the fan. So that's uh, quite quite novel. Now I did notice on GitHub that somebody had also forked the original repository and added some other features. So I'm going to install that and uh, see how that com compares with, uh, with, with this. Here on GitHub we can see the forked repository and what this does in addition uh, is listed here. Auto scaling the temperature, that sounds useful. Pinpoint the min and max pixel. I'm going to download this and install it and then I can show it to you on the M5 stack. This is the other repository flashed and uh, obviously there is something slightly awry as the screen is rotated through 90 degrees. Now looking at the code here we see this feature for M5 LCD set rotation and in the original sketch that is set to zero. So I wonder if that's the fix. And sure enough, that appears to have fixed it. Let's have a look at some of these features now. You don't need this capacitor, by the way. If you've been wondering about that, uh, you need to check out my first video. Um, that's practically the only way to get it to flash, even though with that on it uh, doesn't flash reliably. So what new goodies have we got in this release? Well, here we can see we have uh, a mode button, a scale button and a pause button. Now if we hit the scale, so it will auto scale. So if we look at a hotspot here for example and hit scale, the upper range and the lower range have shifted up so that it, uh, it covers that range better. If I put my hand under it and auto scale again, it's now gone down to 32 and 31. So that's a useful feature. Uh, what else can we do? We have the mode here to set the minimum. So we set the minimum as we wish there. And similarly, scale max up here, that's changing. And the uh, pointers min and max. So if we put the max, we can see there the pixel identifying the maximum and equally the minimum. You can see that. See that? Oh, I guess that's better. So yeah, I think uh, I think that's a very useful uh, addition. I'll uh, contact the developer and let them know about the screen rotation issue. Now time for a little story. Many years ago, after I left college, I joined a company called Marconi Space and Defence Systems in the thick film hybrid department where we made various um, circuits for uh, military whiz-bangs, uh, satellites and uh, secure radio systems. Now these were limited batches of 10 or 20 maybe circuits and obviously they were, they were very very expensive. As they were so expensive um, they needed to be reworked if they failed or, or didn't work from the, from the get-go and this was back in the days of NMOS and PMOS, even before CMOS. There were various people normally surrounded by huge rafts of equipment, spectrum analyzers, frequency generators, the works, uh, to find the faults on these boards and get them reworked. But at the end of the, of the line in the clean room, there was a guy that uh, just sat on his own. He generally only had a multimeter and his fix rate was actually higher than these uh, other guys with all the equipment. And I was puzzled by this so uh, I got chatting to the guy and it turned out that he was actually an ex-diesel mechanic from uh, Portsmouth Corporation on the buses. Anyway, he, he shared his secret with me. How is your, your, your repair rate so much higher than these guys? He said, well, I'll tell you a secret. And on his bench in front of him he had a little bottle of uh, isopropanol and all he used to do was to squirt this over the circuit and see where the hot spot was and say well that shouldn't be getting hot get it changed and it was as simple as that so maybe this little device will uh, will help me out in that respect as well